Hello there, very good morning to you. There are reports of clashes near government buildings in Damascus this morning after three of President Assad's inner circle were killed yesterday in a bomb attack. The rebel Free Syrian Army says it killed the defence minister, President Bashar al-Assad's brother-in-law and a senior general. Activists claim that President Assad is now in the coastal city of Latakia directing the response to those assassinations. Well, the United Nations monitoring mission to Syria ends today. Later today, the UN Security Council must decide whether to approve sanctions against the regime. Well, before leaving for Geneva, the head of that UN mission, Major General Robert Mood, made a statement about what's been happening in the last 24 hours. I express my condemnation of the attack yesterday to the Syrian government, and I call on the parties to end the bloodshed and violence in all its forms, recommitting to a peaceful solution to this conflict. The mandate of UNSMIS will become relevant when the political process takes off. That is why any extension of the mission would come with a shift to a more political posture. Well, our Beirut correspondent, Jim Muir, is monitoring developments uh, in Syria. He said yesterday's killings could mark a turning point in the conflict. Certainly, um, it could turn out that we're now seeing the tilt point beyond which um, the events will speed up and uh, be a kind of downhill slide in, until the regime finally collapses. But uh, we have to reserve judgment. Uh, there's fighting going on. The government has vowed that it will crush with an iron fist um, the, the rebels, so-called terrorists, that they say have infiltrated the uh, capital. So we're seeing very heavy fighting now uh, around uh, the center of the city, uh, southwest side, west side, and over in the northeast side, um, all around the capital. Everybody there must be hearing the noises. Um, but uh, so both sides are reporting heavy clashes and heavy casualties. The government says it's killed many of what it calls terrorists. And um, the activists are saying that uh, many have died, including uh, a large number, apparently, who were killed when a funeral procession just to the south, outside the city limits, at a place called Zainab, uh, a shrine area, uh, was hit by a helicopter rocket fire, a funeral procession, with something like 60 or even 100 people killed there. And there's horrible video on the internet uh, to back that up. So lots going on. The regime is fighting back. Uh, it may be able to hold it for, for quite some time. That's uh, Jim Muir, our correspondent in Lebanon, uh, monitoring what's going on in Syria. Well, we can speak now to a resident uh, of Damascus, somebody living there who uh, doesn't want to be identified because he is concerned about his own safety, understandably. He's on the line now. Thank you for being with us. What, what can you tell us about what you're seeing and hearing there today in Damascus? Well, uh, yesterday was a lot of clashes. We hear a lot of sounds all the night. Uh, I think... Uh, in the day, was uh, the clashes were more stronger than night. Uh, uh, we stayed at homes. Uh, no one uh, went out his home because, as I told you, you don't know where the clash will uh, happen. So that we stayed at homes and we hear the news and we hear the sounds of clashes and uh, maybe sometimes rockets or something like this in many places in Damascus. Does it seem to you that this civil war, if that is what it is now, is, is really, or well, has come to Damascus, has come to the capital? Well, uh, I'm afraid of that uh, because uh, there's uh, something, uh, there's a lot of uh, rumours in the streets. They, anyone can make rumour that uh, certain uh, people are killing or... Uh, uh, treating other uh, people so that uh, no, no one knows what is happening. So that uh, you, you can say you, you can say that uh, we are we are uh, going to this to civil war or something. Yeah. And after yesterday's attack, which, uh, as we were just saying, has killed three of President Assad's closest uh, advisers and officials. Um, do you feel that the Assad regime is running out of time, that perhaps this is the end or the beginning of the end for the Assad regime? Well, uh, maybe at, uh, after uh, the accident uh, happened in the morning, all, uh, most of people thought that, but uh, 
afternoon uh, when you hear the sounds of clashes and you see the news, you can notice that nothing changed. The military operation is uh, going on, nothing uh, stop it. And, and for people living in Damascus, what is everyday life like there now? Is, is it a question of people just staying in their homes, as you've been describing, or are people able to go out and, and carry out their everyday lives? Well, yesterday you can say uh, Damascus was uh, as the city of ghosts. ghosts. But uh, today, uh, some of people uh, went out uh, their homes. Uh, they go outside to bring uh, what they need. Uh, 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 but uh, also, a lot uh, of uh, shops uh, or markets are closed. They, most of uh, shops and uh, markets are closed. Uh, all uh, everybody is afraid from what is uh, coming. No one knows where we are going now. OK, well, thank you so much for taking the time to speak to us. Uh, that's a resident of Damascus who, who doesn't want, as I said, to be identified because of uh, fears for his safety, but uh, talking to us live from Damascus there on the line. Well, in terms of diplomacy, as we were saying, there is that vote due to take place in the UN later this afternoon. Uh, as uh, we have been saying for some time, there is still pressure being put on Russia. Of course, Russia, one of those key countries that has a veto to any of this. David Cameron has been talking about this again today. Uh, he says Russia should change its mind and back sanctions, which is one of the things that is due to be voted on later. We'll be live in Moscow in a moment. Let's just hear a little first uh, from David Cameron. The message to President Putin, who I discussed this with uh, at the G8 in, in Mexico, uh, and the message to all those on the UN Security Council, it is time for the UN Security Council to pass clear and tough messages about sanctions, I believe under Chapter 7 of the UN, and to be unambiguous in this. Now, obviously, we are a UN Security Council with permanent members um, and permanent members that have vetoes. We can't pass these things without everybody stepping up to the plate and taking the right action. But I would appeal to those who in the past have held out against tough action against Syria that, you know, what more evidence do we need about a regime that has brutalised its own people? And as I say, the alternative to political transition at the top of Syria is revolution from the bottom in Syria. And I think it is in everybody's interest, the Syrian people, the region, the wider world, uh, the, the, the fight against terrorism, it is in everybody's interest that that transition takes place and that political transition takes place quickly. The sooner that happens, uh, the sooner the people of Syria can be freed from the tyranny under which they're currently suffering. David Cameron, just a little earlier, let's talk to our correspondent Steve Rosenberg following all of this in Moscow and the British Prime Minister, C Steve, uh, making it quite clear or saying that his message to Putin is that Russia has to rethink. How does that call go down? I don't think that David Cameron's words will have much of an effect on Vladimir Putin. Last month, uh, Mr Cameron irritated the Russians quite a bit when he suggested that uh, President Putin's position had changed on Syria. The Russians uh, ferociously denied it and, uh, and uh, were very critical of Mr Cameron. Having said that, clearly there are diplomatic efforts underway uh, to try to persuade the Russians to change their position. We know that uh, President Obama telephoned President Putin uh, last night and had a 50-minute conversation. We've been hearing today from President Putin's foreign policy advisor about that conversation. Um, he said that by the end of the talk, both leaders had a better understanding of the nuances of their two sides, although he conceded that there were still disagreements. And that suggests that the Russians have not been persuaded yet to change their opposition to sanctions at the uh, UN Security Council. And, and, and is, the, is the issue actually <laughs> relatively simple? I use the word advisedly, but, but the sense that the West, uh, David Cameron and others, would say this is a humanitarian issue. There are innocent people being killed on a daily basis in this country. But Russia presumably has anxieties about uh, attempts at regime change. Is that how they see it? To a large extent, yes. The Russians are not 100 per cent committed to keeping President Assad in power. That is clear. It is clear the Russians are um, 
partly embarrassed, partly frustrated by what President Assad is doing. Uh, there's no love lost there, despite the economic ties, the close economic ties between Russia and Syria. But on the other side, yes, Russia looks back in uh, recent history, it looks back at what happened with Serbia, with Iraq, it looks back at Libya, and the Russians believe a pattern has emerged, and that, and that Western governments are trying to get rid of regimes which are pro-Moscow and bring about regime change, and the Russians don't want any part of that at all. Steve, thanks very much for now. Steve Rosenberg in Moscow. Just to say, for more detailed information on the Syria crisis, uh, you can visit our website. That's bbc.co.uk slash Syria.